Hey guys, this is Mr. Zari here from Landrum Middle School. Uh, today we're going to take a look at another machine, uh, and this happens to be a pretty mobile and portable machine that we're going to take a look at, and that is the router. Okay. Uh, just so you know, a router is typically used for two different reasons uh, in our class. One is if we want to change the way the edge of a piece of wood looks. So if we don't like that 90 degree edge on the, on the edge of the wood, we can change it to a round over or a round and a step, a step, whatever, an angle, chamfer, anything that we want, we can do that. We also use routers to kind of carve in designs into a piece of wood. Uh, just as long as you keep a steady hand, you can carve pretty good design into a piece of wood. That's completely up to you. Before we do anything, though, I just want to remind you guys that anytime you're doing something, make sure that you're using your brain. Make sure that you think it through. Okay? So, uh, before I actually show you how to use the machine, first thing we need to do is make sure that we know what the parts are. That way we're speaking the same language. So, this right here is a router. R-O-U-T-E-R. Okay, and the router doesn't have too many parts that we're necessarily worried about. Uh, but we'll start off with this part, which is called the base. So this entire part right here is the base, and the base is really all of these components put together. But when I say set the router on the base, I'm talking about this flat surface right here. This is the base. Attached to the base, you have these two large black grips, G-R-I-P-S or you can call them a knob, K-N-O-B. So we've got the base and we've got the grips or the knobs. Now, a router is nothing more than an electric motor, okay? And so this is the electric motor or the router, but attached to the router is a router bit. So in this case, what you see that's red there, this is a quarter inch roundover bit. We can take these out and replace them with other types of bits, just like a drill bit is easily to, uh, to replace from a drill press. All right, but this happens to be the router bit that I have put in place for this. And then on all routers, there's obviously a power switch. So we've got the on and off switch here. Some routers allow you to change the speed of the router. This one doesn't. This is just one constant speed no matter what. So on and off switch, router bit. This is the actual motor. We've got the base and the grips. All right. So now that we've taken a look at the different parts of the router, the next thing that we need to do is make sure that we take care of all of our personal safety items. So item number one is make sure that you're always wearing safety glasses. Item number two is make sure that your shirt is tucked in. Item number three is make sure you're not wearing any long sleeves, jackets, or sweaters. We want to always see from the elbow all the way to the tips of your fingers. That way nothing gets hung up in a machine, uh, nothing gets caught on something else while you're working. <clears throat> the next thing is no watches, rings, necklaces, bracelets, jewelry, lanyards, earrings that are dangling. Anything that is kind of hanging off of you, you need to make sure that you take that off. Leave it at your table. And then the last thing is make sure you always tie your hair back. Whether you're a guy or a girl, if you have long hair, you don't want it in your face. You want to be able to see what you're doing. And you don't want to get it hung up in the actual machine that you're using. So now that we've gone over those things, let's figure out how to use this machine. So, first thing that we've got to do before we come over here or we get this machine, we've got to have a plan. So, I only have a quarter inch roundover bit in this machine right now, so my plan is I just simply want to round over the edges of this piece of wood, which is just a scrap piece of wood. So, that's my plan. I have it. Now, I'm ready to go get the machine. These machines are in the tool room, or you can ask Mr. Zari to bring you one and set it up for you because if you're not comfortable. Once you've done that, you have two different options as to where you can go with the router. I prefer that you come back to this back table because it's away from everybody else and we have electrical outlets available for you. Plus, it's got carpet and there's a specific reason why. But, sometimes you might want to use the router at your table. If you do use the router at your table, you're going to have a big mess to clean up, not only on the table, but on everybody else's backpack and papers and things like that. Plus, you got to make sure that everybody who's sitting at the table either puts on some safety glasses or they have to move because this machine makes a big mess that you've got to clean up. There is no dust collection system for this machine. All right. So once you figured out where you're going to go, you go there. Now, in my case, I came back to the big green table and I'm setting this on a piece of carpet. 
And on top of that carpet, though, I'm going to be using these little things, which are plastic. Uh, they're called bench cookies or bench dogs. Uh, these are specifically used to elevate a piece of wood off of a flat surface, but they also have rubberized grip to keep a piece of wood from moving around. That is extremely important. If you have a thick enough piece of wood, you can just simply put it on the carpet. The carpet provides enough friction to keep the piece of wood from moving around also. But in my case, this piece of wood is too thick. So now that I have that set up, I need to set the router up. And so the way that I set the router up is pretty simple. I'm going to turn it over, and I'm going to unlock this base, and I'm going to spin the base until I expose the amount of the router bit that I want to have exposed. So I'm just randomly doing this. I'm not going to get a perfect quarter inch round over. It's going to be a round over with a possible step on it. So that is the way I have it set up. I lock the base back in place. Now, because I have the router bit sticking out of the base, I can no longer set the router flat on the base because you can see that it doesn't sit flat this can damage the router bit. So if it has a flat top, we can turn it over, or if it doesn't have a flat top, we have to set it on its side just like that. Now that I have that set up, the next thing that I want to do is I want to look at the power switch and I want to make sure that it's switched to off. Okay, This is important. You don't want to plug this machine in and it automatically turns on and you're not ready for it because it will start to spin very quickly and you will lose control over it pretty quick. Before I actually plug this machine in, I want to make sure that anytime I'm about to plug anything in, I've got to inspect the power cable, make sure that there's no frays in the cable, there's no cuts or splits. That way I don't get electrocuted. This is a brand new router, so there better not be anything in it. I'm going to go ahead and take the plug, and I'm going to plug it into the outlet, just like that. Okay. Now that I'm plugged in, this thing is ready to go, but there's a couple of things that we need to pay close attention to. Number one, there's only one direction that you should be using a router if you are doing the outside of a piece of wood, changing the edges. This is different if you're carving, but if we're using an outside edge type bit, you can only go around the piece of wood in a counterclockwise direction. Now, if you don't know what counterclockwise is, it's really simple. Take your right hand and form a gun with your thumb and your pointer finger. If you take that, you point your thumb to the piece of wood, your pointer finger will tell you the direction that is counterclockwise. Okay? This only works with your right hand. You cannot use your left hand because it will give you clockwise. So counterclockwise is the way that we're going to go. So I'm going to start on this right edge, and I'm going to go away from me and then around that way. Okay? So that's the direction I'm going to travel. The next thing is, is once I'm ready and I have this thing turned on, I'm going to slowly bring it down until the base sits flat onto the piece of wood, and then I'm going to bring it until it comes in contact with the piece of wood. There is a bearing on that router bit that will allow it to roll across the edge of this piece of wood, so once I come in contact with the wood, everything should be A-OK, -okay, and I'm just going to gra gradually and carefully go counterclockwise around the piece of wood. So let's see this in action. I'm going to pick it up by the grip. And I want to keep this power cable out of the way. So I think I'm going to turn it like this. And I'm going to take my left hand or left arm and kind of keep the power cable out of the way. I'm holding it nice and tight. And I'm going to turn it on. So it's going to get loud. set it down, do not touch it while it is spinning, okay? So, you probably didn't hear me whenever I was doing that because this machine is extremely loud. But what you want to make sure that you do is just carefully and slowly bring it flat. Once it comes in contact, then start traveling around counterclockwise. And so what I've got here is I've got a little bit of a round over on that edge of wood. Not a big deal. Now, when I'm done, First thing that I want to do after it comes to a complete stop is I want to unplug the machine. Once it's unplugged, 
Then I'm going to loosen the base and I'm going to twist the base until the router bit is hidden by the base. That way I can turn it back over and set it flat. And then I'm just simply going to wrap the cable back around the router the way that it was when I originally got it. And if I'm done with this and I'm not going to use it and nobody else is, then I need to take it back to the tool room and put it away with all the rest of the routers. Okay? Now, next step though is you're going to have to clean up the mess. I didn't make too big of a mess because I didn't cut much. But there will be sawdust all over here. It will be over here. So you're going to have to sweep all of that up. Remember, which I didn't mention this, remember that when you are using the router, there's a window right here. You're going to look into that window to pay attention to where the router bit is on the wood. Okay? That should be pretty obvious, but you'll see whenever you actually use it. Now, once I've cleaned up, I'm done. I'm ready to go back to my table and figure out what my next step is. So, remember, anytime you do something, make sure that you use your brain. Make sure you think it through, and always try to do the right thing. Alright? Take it easy.